guys, let me ask you a question. Have you had some trouble? I think we've all had some trouble at times with getting new customers. I mean, really, what's the, the secret sauce to getting new customers? In today's episode, I'm talking to a fabulous lady that I met whilst in the US late last year who has written a book on the topic, and I absolutely adore it. It's simple, effective, and we're going to talk about it today. Let's have a chat. Hi guys and welcome to episode 18. I can't believe it. I'm 18 episodes in and uh, really pleased to have you here for the 18th episode of So You Want to Be an Interior Designer. This show is really for you guys out there, those maybe mid-life, mid-career, sea change solopreneurs who are looking for support in creating their own bespoke interior design or decorating business so that you can actually take on the jobs that you want to take on whilst you might even be working nine to five. Isn't that interesting? But today I want to jump into the topic. Um, before I actually, before I jump into the topic, have you gone ahead and tried my quiz or have you taken my quiz? If you need a report on the strengths and opportunities in your new design career, take the quiz. It's adamsgoogle.com forward slash quiz. Takes about two minutes, only about 15 questions. Go ahead and take the quiz and tell me what you think, adam at adamscoogle.com. Let me know what comes up in that report. I'd love to have a chat to you if you let me know how you go. But on to today's topic, and wow, I'm, I'm really keen to talk to this lovely lady who I've met late last year. Stacey, how are you? I am doing great. I just want to say congratulations on hitting 18 episodes. I think once you get past the first hump of 10, the next big hump you got to get past is 52. So you'll oh, get there. Okay. Stacey, how many episodes for you? Because you are a podcaster. Yeah, so I batch produce mine. So in my head, I'm a little bit ahead of what actually shows up in the app for the podcast Roadmap to Referrals. But I am in the process of recording episodes 300 through 304. Wow. Oh, my gosh. I can't even think of getting that far. <laughs> that, is, that is awesome. So congratulations to you, Stacey. I want to jump into today's topic, though, because um, I think it's really poignant for anybody at any stage in their business, but um, especially for our audience, which are that kind of, um, a lot of a lot of people just starting out in their design careers, and, and that normally, you know, they're kind of that mid, mid-life sea change, maybe we could say, and one of the things that they need to get sorted is how do you actually get uh, sound referrals um, from, you know, from whoever, you know, you could be starting out with your first or second client, then you're going to work it out from there. But let's have a talk about it. I do want to introduce Stacey officially and read out, uh, read out, give you guys some information on Stacey. Stacey Brown Randall is the multi-platinum award-winning author of Generating Business Referrals Without Asking. And she's a host and of the Roadmap to Referrals podcast and national speaker, which is awesome. Stacey teaches business owners how to generate referrals naturally. Isn't that fabulous? We all want to do it without a whole lot of pomp and ceremony, without manipulating, incentivizing, or even asking. How do you do that? She's been featured in national publications like Entrepreneur Magazine, Investor, Business Daily, Forbes, and more. She's also the co-author of Luanne Nagara's book, A Well-Designed Business, The Power Talk Friday Experts Volume 1, which I also recommend and have a copy of. Stacey's received her master's in organizational communication and is married with three kids. Stacey, thank you for joining us today. Um, really keen to jump into things with you uh, because, look, when I spoke to you at Luann Live, which is a conference that I, I attended uh, late last year in November, I met you there and, and I knew that you were spearheading the idea of uh, effective referrals. So I'm um, generating business referrals, but I didn't know the whole kind of outline of how you actually do this. So I think it's interesting for people to know a little bit about um, a little bit about that. But I think first, can we just we've got your bio there, but can I can we get a little bit more information, Stacey, on your story? How did you end up coming up with this amazing referral system? How did it all start? Yeah, you know, I think it'd be a really cool story if I could just tell you one day God was like, you're going to wake up and be brilliant when it comes to referrals. That's a kind of cool, easy story. 
Sounds very easy. That would have been amazing. Um, that's not how it went down. It was basically learned through the school of hard knocks. And I never, if you would have told me, you know, my business is now over 10 years, but had you had told me like 15 years ago or even longer than that, that one day you'll teach people how to be, how to go against the grain of how everybody else teaches referrals and you're going to be a contrarian in the space of referrals, I would have been like, what are you talking about? But I had a business. It was a human resource consulting firm and it failed after almost five years. And so I had to take down my shingle which is really hard to do. I had to go back to corporate America and I had to figure out what was next while I was working in, in a job. And, you know, for me, it was more about, I see other people being successful. Why isn't this working for me? What am I missing? What am I doing wrong? Like my clients loved me. I was really good at what I did, but why couldn't I figure out how to make the business successful? And it's one of the big lessons I learned from that business failure was that you have to be willing to touch business development all the time. And I don't mean like all the time, like every single day, but if you don't have the right strategies in place and the right mechanisms in place and just the right mindset in place of what it looks like to touch business development all the time, you just won't. As a business owner, right? Like let's think about this from an interior designer's perspective. I work with a lot of interior designers and I love the creative process that you guys go through. I don't have an ounce of that creativity in my body. Um, but I listen to business owners talk about you're really good at what you do, right? Like, Adam, you're a really good interior designer. Your listeners are really good interior designers. You get a project. You're very excited. You put your head down and you go to work on that project. And then the project ends as they all do eventually. And then you look up and you look around and you're like, oh, no, I do not have another project. I do not have another client. It's called the entrepreneurial roller coaster. It's very common in your first year. Sometimes it'll continue into your second year, depending. But I was still on that entrepreneur roller coaster, feast or famine, have clients, don't have clients. I can pay myself, I can't pay myself. And I lived on that for four years. And eventually something has to give. And for me, it was, I need more stable income. And so I had to go back and get a job, but I was always looking for my exit strategy. I found it, I started a second business and I was like, I gotta do things different. And that means I've gotta figure out a way to touch business development in a way that I can I can make sure I'm doing it often, but in a way that works for me. And I was like, why am I not getting referrals? My clients loved me. Everybody says, do great work and you'll get referrals. That is not true. That is not how it works. You'll get maybe one or two or a couple. And I was like, I got to figure this out. And then everything I read, like you have as anybody who comes into business and wants referrals, they're like, ask for them, pay for them, put in your email signature. The greatest compliment you can give me is a referral. And then you feel awful and desperate and icky doing it. And then you wonder why it's not working. And I was the same way as everybody else. So I was like, I'm going to figure this out. And that's what I did my first year in my second business. I received 112 referrals that I didn't ask for. Then my clients, I was a productivity coach at the time. Then my clients were asking me, thanks for helping me figure out how to tame my inbox. But I really want to learn how you're getting so many referrals, which then forced me to figure out, oh, there's a strategy, there's a process, there are steps involved. This is what I do, this is what I say. And I just started doing that with my clients. And it was one-to-one -one at first, and then it was workshops. And then I was like, okay, now it's working for lots of people. I eventually rolled out an online program. Now I have a, a coaching program. Um, I do some one-to-one -one work as well. And that was 10 years ago. And we're just rocking and rolling. And it all comes down to the fundamental belief that referrals when you're thinking about building out a referral strategy in your business you should do it based on the science of how referrals work which is the big differentiator between me and the strategies i teach and the success my clients have and pretty much every other way that you're taught to generate referrals yeah oh gosh i'm in ah i um do you know what i i'm just just taking everything you and you've said there first and foremost i'm kind of congratulating you because i think anyone that's made a change and come up with a system that we all need to know about. We really, really, really do need to know how to um, obtain our next client. That referral leads to a new client. You know, the um, I can I can name all of my design projects. Most of them have been referral, but they don't come humming along all the time. And uh, I even asked you in... Um, uh, in the US, I said, uh, if I can share this one, Stacey, I said, I've got a client. I've just done a job. 
And um, I know there's a woman that's just come back from Italy and she's, she's, she's got the finances to do the job and she's asked about uh, the project and who worked on it. And they said, uh, we've got to uh, get you in contact with her. Now, this is before I'd met you. And uh, I'm sitting there in the old way that everybody thinks until they read this, um, in that I've just got to wait. <laughs> and so who did? How effective is that? Not effective. Not effective at all. I mean, here's the thing. Sometimes... It's like a very rare, but sometimes people will talk about you to someone else. It's called word of mouth buzz. It's not a referral, but people want it to be. Sometimes they'll call it word of mouth referral. I'm like, that's not a thing. Those are two totally different things. Word of mouth is when someone's talking about you and that's all. Um, sometimes that person will have enough pain or be so ready to start that they will figure out how to get a hold of you after hearing your name from somebody else and they'll reach out themselves. It's like we're word of mouth buzz. It, when they do that, because you find it, oh. it is amazing. It's like where word of mouth buzz flips itself into a referral. The problem is it rarely happens. And if you're waiting on it to happen, you will just play a really long waiting game. And that's exactly what happens. To finish off that story, Stacey, you gave me, I actually asked you this question live. And I said, uh, I'd love to talk to this potential client, but I can't. You know, I'm just waiting. What do I do? And uh, if I can share your advice, which was very, very simple, but do you know what I didn't, it didn't even strike me. Ask your current client to do a warm introduction via email to this new potential client. And uh, I, <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, that's a really good idea. And you know what? It may still not get there, but my gosh, it's a lot warmer and a lot more likely to get there um, than if you hadn't advised me that. But um, look, there's a lot more to this, Stacey, than, than just that scenario. And um, the one thing I like, if I can just say about your your perspective, I find it is so uh, genuine and it's something that isn't just a business strategy for referrals. It's something you can take to heart and just use on a personal basis. So the one thing that connected me with your book was that it's kind of their life lessons in terms of, we do want to keep in touch and you'll talk more about some of the, the ideas behind the book, but... Uh, the whole idea too is that we keep in touch regularly with these people and, and we don't just sort of abandon the cause and hope that one day they'll call us again. One of the things I know that you talk about is just keeping in touch with people. But I also think from a personal perspective, I got a lot out of it just in terms of not only business, if I can say this, but from a personal basis about letting people know I'm here for them, I'm here for you, whether that's my mother, my brother, my friend from the, that I met 20 years ago that I never talked to that's going through hard times, we're getting away from referrals, but it, the basis of what you're teaching is is based on actually being a good person. So that's what I think. <laughs> I love it that you say that because sometimes when I'm like working with my clients or I'm, you know, doing a podcast interview like this or talking to people, I'm like, sometimes I feel like I'm just reminding people how to be a good person. It is so much more than that, but it definitely starts it is, it is a lot more than that. And we get to talk about that. But Stacey, that's what really, I think people love it when there's a connection, an emotional connection, and you feel in your heart that what you're doing is authentic and it's based on doing something for other people that is actually based on care without reciprocation all the time. But um, can I just jump in? Uh, I mean, look, I'm sure you've got many, many of, of these things that you can tell me, but what is the biggest thing that we get wrong first and foremost in our quest for getting referrals or effective referrals? Well, there are so many <laughs> that people get wrong. Um, but I would say, you know, I do a lot of educating for folks to understand that the way that you think about referrals in your business and where they fit within your sales strategy, most people are getting wrong. And it's tied to the old school advice you've probably been told about how to get referrals. So when you're asking someone to talk about sales strategy, typically you'll hear them talk about, oh, well, you have prospecting activities that you do. Like maybe you're gonna do cold calling, maybe you're gonna do uh, direct mailing, maybe you're going to do networking, right? Seven million cups of coffee, join some other groups, right? Where you can meet people, you'll have prospecting activities. And then they'll say, and then you need marketing activity. So you have a, mar a prospecting plan and a marketing plan and your marketing plan will be like your website. 
and social media and growing yourself as a thought leader. Maybe it's getting earned PR, public relations, like getting some earned media. And they'll talk about sales like it's a two-legged stool. And because sales is talked about like a two-legged stool, this concept of referrals, right? If you only have two legs, well, then you're going to figure out how to make it fit within those two legs of the stool. And so the people who have been teaching referrals for a lot longer than I've been around, that was the premise of, okay, well, then where do referrals fit? If you believe referrals fit in the prospecting leg of your sales strategy, then the, the things that you teach as the tactics are things like asking and paying for them because it's very prospecting in nature, like how fast can I get you to a potential referral, right? So it's asking, right? It's that um, making sure that you're networking to always be seen and if you can never be forgotten and then paying for referrals. But on the flip side of that, if you believe it fits in, if you believe referrals fit in marketing, right, then that's where you're going to teach people to be promotional and gimmicky, like put in your email signature, the greatest compliment you can give me as a referral, which is very gimmicky and only worked for a very short amount of time when it was brand new, like a couple of decades ago. (laughs) It hasn't been new in a long time, so it's not working in the same way. But if, if you only have two legs to your stool and you're like marketing prospecting, great, referrals got to fit somewhere, then the tactics that are taught fit under the mindset of those two legs, either prospecting or marketing. I believe that referrals and actually its own leg to your sales strategy, it has its own leg to the stool. Yes, prospecting is good. Yes, marketing is good. Referrals just don't belong there. The third leg to your sales strategy is actually referrals. The mindset is different. Who you're doing it for is different. The language you use is different. The time horizon you're looking at can also be different. Everything's different when you look at referrals for being their own leg to the stool. And that's the first mindset shift I want people to always do when they're thinking about referrals. It's like stop thinking that it fits within prospecting and marketing and recognize when you're on the quest for referrals, you got to show up different. You got to sound different. You got to be different. And you got to understand who the audience is for referrals. And it needs its own leg to your stool, which means you need your own strategies that support it. Yeah, I mean, gosh, <clears throat> I, I guess that takes us, pardon me, into the next um, question, Stace, which is what is what is an effective referral system? I mean, you 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 started to really um, get into that there, but is there kind of a base line strategy that we can sort of just take away today and? kind of just understand from, I guess, the book. I think there are certain parts to it. It's definitely easier to understand. The The reality of it is, is that the way I teach referrals, it's not a one and done. It's not a one strategy. Everybody needs this one strategy. It's a one size fits all. Take the strategy off to the races you go. The truth is we teach referrals from a referral ecosystem perspective. We believe that within your business, your business is an overall ecosystem. And within that business ecosystem is a referral ecosystem, which means referrals are hanging out in more areas than you actually think they are. They're not only coming from specific people that we call referral sources, whether they're existing or potential, but also within your client experience, also within your buyer's journey, also within some of the marketing and um, social media that you do and events that you do. Like it kind of lives in multiple places. It doesn't live in your accounting part of your business, right? Like there's, doesn't live everywhere. But there are areas where it lives. And so when you think about referrals having their own ecosystem within your business, it becomes very clear that one strategy is not going to like give you all the referrals you ultimately probably are going to want. And one size fits all, like asking for referrals is not going to ultimately work. When we look at that referral ecosystem right now with my coaching clients and my VIP clients, we teach 19 different strategies. Will an interior designer need them all? Absolutely not. But there are going to be things that happen within your business that are going to be different that you're going to need access to so that you actually create a referral ecosystem within your business. That very interesting. Thank you, Stacey, that last point. It it actually started, I started to, to process some things that I've done in my business, in my interior design business. Um, that haven't quite worked out the way that I thought they would in terms of being effective. I wanted to run this by you. I know we didn't talk about it in our pre-notes, um, but um, I was part of a networking group for a full year. I actually paid a fee, as most people do, for a business networking group. So you meet, um, there's all different labels, uh, but you meet basically once a week. It's normally a breakfast. You pay a yearly fee. 
Um, you've got to make sure you turn up. If other people don't turn up, or oh, sorry, if you don't turn up, you've got to get, recruit someone else to turn up. And then the whole thing is that you're listening to people's stories and business plans and you are firing off in notes. You're thinking, I've got a referral for you. Uh, call this person or call this person or that person. Now, did that for a year. I did it with a friend of mine who was also a designer and we finished up um, kind of just feeling like we'd met some nice people um, but we didn't get any design jobs out of it. I knew a good accountant if I wanted to get my accounting done or if I wanted a headshot done, I might have a contact for me to get my headshot done. I might find a plumber who can do good plumbing. But I wasn't getting any design clients, that's for sure. Stace, do you mind, can I ask you about that? Because a lot of people come out of college and they go, right, one of the things I'm going to do is start, get into a networking group so I can start to get clients. Interior design. Why didn't it work? <laughs> so, okay, there's a couple of things, right? So a group, oh, I have so many, so many thoughts, so many things. Um, so the, the couple of things I want people to keep in mind is part of it is the groups you join. Part of it is being strategic with your time while you're in that group and like leveraging those relationships. And then part of it is also understanding that referrals can't be forced or manufactured. So if we break these down, it's looking at like, if you're thinking about it as how the group is, is it the right people in the group? Are they actually the people who will come across your ideal client? Well, let's just take an interior designer, for example, that's like, hey, when people work with me, right, they have to have a budget of at least $25,000 if they want, and I'm using US dollars, obviously I don't know how it translates, right, they have to have a budget of at least $25,000 to do their kitchen because you cannot do it for less than that, right? And then it also includes my design fee. That's low. So you're in what? It's low. twenty five. Right. That's just starter, isn't it? I'm sure for most, it's like, I need 75,000 to 100. But just using that as our example, if you're in a group with folks that aren't going to actually come across people that are ever going to be in a situation where they want to spend 25,000 or $50,000 on any design project, let alone it be a kitchen, right? It doesn't matter how lovely they think you are. They'll never be able to refer you an ideal client. Probably can refer you people you don't want to talk to, but they're not going to refer you an ideal client. And so, I think groups like that, and that's that goes for any networking group, it is only as good as the people who are in the group. And I know some groups that the networking is fantastic and it's very supportive and the, the right mix of the right people. And then other groups are like an abysmal failure and you feel like you wasted time and money. So the group matters. The second thing is, is that you've got to pay attention to how you're leveraging the relationships in that group. If you're only showing up for that breakfast every Tuesday morning or that once a month lunch meeting, and you're just allowing the people to get to know you and you to get to know people within that timetable, you're not really being strategic with your time. And I always tell folks, when you decide to invest in some type of networking group or leads group, right, you need to make sure that you're going to also make time in your calendar to do one-on-ones with those people. Because no one's going to refer to you just because they sit across from a circle from you or in a room with you, right? once a week or once a month. The concept is there. It doesn't happen in reality. And so you got to get to know them. And then how you cultivate that relationship, what you say, what you do, what it looks like to cultivate someone to start referring you. Who's never done it? That is a process. And it doesn't just happen because you show up every Tuesday morning for breakfast and give your story. Like, oh yeah, this is what I do, right? The third thing is recognizing that referrals can't be forced. You're not getting referrals in that group. You're getting leads and there is a very distinct difference because in an organization that is going to require you to give so many referrals, most people will eventually start just coming up with people to refer so they can say, I've given my quota, I've given out the referrals, I've hit the metric I'm supposed to hit. I'm in good standing in the group because I've given referrals, which means they're just given stuff. They're not actually paying attention to does this person need what Adam does? And so what we always tell folks is that there's got to be two things for a referral to happen, desire and opportunity, right? When you think about desire, that's what you control. Adam's the interior desire that I refer to. I wouldn't consider referring to anyone else, but that's based on my relationship with Adam. The other part is that is opportunity. Do I ever come across anybody that needs what Adam does? Because I can't control the opportunity. Nobody can. People want you to believe you can, right? When you're forcing those 
leads to be given that are called referrals. People want to believe they can force opportunity. But for a referral to show up and be a really good referral, the prospect has to know they have a need and they have to be okay with wanting to solve that need, which is why they want to be referred to you. They want to potentially talk about solving their problem and you're going to be the person solving it. So you can't manufacture the need. You can't manufacture the prospect or force the that connection point to happen when it doesn't actually exist. And so there's a lot that can go into making groups like that successful, but there's also a lot that can go into groups like that that ultimately become a waste of time. Yeah, thanks, Stacey. Um, I mean, I threw that one at you, but I, 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 I relate to everything. I mean, I know that you, you would have gone over this scenario with, with others before, but I yes. can relate to what you said. It was a numbers game. Um, I was getting and giving. I've got to be honest, Stacey. You know, everyone's got to come up with some referrals to Joe Plummer or the accountant or Adam Google interior designer. And really, you'd, you'd, you'd make contact with these people. And a lot of them were like, I don't even know why you're calling me. Um, yeah. And I didn't, I have no interest in doing anything with my home or, you know, it's, it's uh, the, probably more the, the, um, the touch points with people that could be trades, you know, but they're not, you're not, I mean, there's, there's, I've got trades. Do you know what I mean? I had trades. You might need a networking group trades. to help you get trades. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm there, you know, a networking group to get trades that whether yeah, ever what you were going to use that group for. Yeah. And I felt like too, it's, um, low ticket stuff was probably better suited. Like if I had a, a low ticket tax return and I could give a 20% discount off or something, then people in the group might be able to rack up some customers. But I felt like it was for lower ticket, quick sort of quick and dirty stuff that you could get referrals for. Um, whether that's just my experience, but, um, yeah, look, thanks, Stacey. I think there's, there's a lot of key things. Um, if I can just read out the, the title, um, the book is by Stacey Brown Randall. I, I ordered this off Amazon and it's a, it's a really easy read generating business referrals without asking a simple five step plan to referral explosion. I love the title. Um, but I would, I would definitely, I mean, I'm still in process. I'm a work in process and I'm, I'm working through some of the elements in your book, Stacey. But I think it's, there's a lot of good in there. Um, and there's a lot of basic stuff in there that we just don't think about. And I think um, your message is that it needs to be authentic. And, uh, you know, we need to be, there, there's certain ways that you do it. And it is true. It is, you did, at no point do you actually say, can you give me a job, please? Uh, or can you be to Nancy? Because <laughs> I need an interior design job. But I do want to finish up, Stace, and I've loved that conversation. I just want to finish up. I know you've worked with interior designers, a few, and that's why you're asked to come to Luann Live and other events by Luann Nagara. Um, because you've got a really, I think, very bespoke and um, quite um, amazing uh, system. But with interior designers, can you give us an example of when Oh, just a good news story, I guess, from one of your clients to, to kind of give us perspective on what can happen if they read your book. And you also offer um, group coaching and, and other things. You should go to your website, Stacey Brown, stacybrownrandall.com. Yeah, that's right. But give t can you tell us a success story for, for an interior designer, Stace? Absolutely. So it is one of my favorite industries to work in. I love working with interior designers. I think partially because I think you guys are creative geniuses and it is so lacking in who I am as a person. So I always feel like when I have interior designers like fill up my Instagram feed, I'm like, oh, it's just this beautiful sense of scrolling, right? As you go through it. So I have had the pleasure and the privilege to work with a number of interior designers. And, you know, the the big thing I always impress upon, and it doesn't really matter if you're an interior designer or you're an attorney. The big thing I always impress upon with my clients and I want interior designers to be thinking about is that there is a difference between having people who have referred you before and having people that you want to refer you. And people confuse those. And so they'll be like, oh, how do I get more referrals? Like, what's the plan I need? I'm like, actually, we're going to build out a plan based on the who the people are. So if someone's never referred you, you actually have to think about that differently versus someone who has referred you before. We can do things different with someone who's an existing referral source or someone who's referred you before. 
So the best thing that you can do is know who your referral sources are. And my favorite thing to do with clients when they go through this process is like, I ask them to kind of like guess, how many referral sources do you think you have? And there are, you know, most of the time we either undershoot or we way overshoot, right? They're like, oh, maybe I had like five or six. And then they end up having a dozen. And then they look at the names on that list of a dozen and they think, oh my gosh, I've been ignoring these people, right? Or the opposite is sometimes true. But I think what's really important is, and, and I'm thinking about like one of the designers that I worked with, you know, it's this idea that knowing once you know who refers you, that's your low hanging fruit to get more referrals faster. But not everybody starts there. And so I have one client that I worked with who the big focus was getting people like contractors and architects and builders to refer to her. And I said, okay, that process takes longer. And she worked one of my strategies and it didn't take this long for her to start getting referrals to happen, but there was one architect she was very keen on. She was like, I want to be the interior designer of record, the only person this architect refers to. She worked that relationship for 18 months, but the very first referral that architect gave her was worth $620,000 over a half a million dollar project. Oh my God. And so like, yeah, she, it's funny when she emailed me, she was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it finally worked. And she was like, it took 18 months. And there's a strategy and a process and an organization that we do to manage that. But I always tell folks, I know when people believe they are worthy of referrals and then they're willing to do the work to receive referrals and can trust the process. I know there's a pot of gold at the end of your rainbow. What I can't tell you is how long it may take till you get into that rainbow. And that has a lot to do with how you treat your clients, how you treat your network, how you treat people who could refer you, how you treat people who've already referred you. You got to have strategies in place for that. Stace, that's great. Um, one of the things that I picked up on there um, is that there, there was a whole program and a process and the interior designer um, that you were working with did have success with the architect at the top of her list and a huge job. I mean, those numbers are they're kind of, I don't know, little old me here would be absolutely salivating in an opportunity to get a job of that size. Uh, solopreneur me, thank you very much. But um, the one thing that we want people to know as well is like anything that's worth it in life, it doesn't take 10 minutes and it's not a press the button and they're in the door. Like anything that's worth worth receiving, it will take time and effort. And that's what you, that's, that's an ethos, isn't it, Stace, of the book? It's just you've got to keep that contact going, but there is fruit. And you know what, Stace, since I've read your book, I, I am a little bit sneaky. I've got a lot of interior designer friends and some of them aren't working. The economy, recession, whatever. They're not, well, they're working, but it's very thin on the ground. And I'll say, um, when was the last time you made contact with your, like your old clients? Oh, I can't do that. I won't, I won't do that. Um, that's just not the right strategy. I'm not a forceful person in it, you know, when they want oh. me to come. And I, I, I go back and I think, I wonder what it would eat, how things would look like if you did have a strategy and you did keep in contact. Well, uh, and why they feel like keeping in contact means you have to be forceful. Like for me, it goes back to that idea of like, oh my gosh, who, who told you something wrong? Because your ability to stay in touch or like stay top of mind with your clients, particularly when they're in the alumni stage and the work is done, like there's value there. But what you do needs to be the right way to do it. But someone who thinks, oh, I can't do that. That means I have to be forceful. I'm like, oh, my gosh, somebody told that person very false information and they believed it. And that breaks my heart. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the thing. And the whole um, ethos behind what you teach is it's not about being forceful at all. Um, but right. you do have to keep contact. So, um, guys, yeah, um, I can, I can't say enough about the book. It's an easy read. Um, go and have a look too at Stacy's courses. Uh, there's a lot of support there. Um, Stacy Brown Randall's S T A C E with an E. You always say Stacy, Stacy Brown Um, they're all, God, uh, listen to the podcast as well. The podcast is called Stace. Roadmap to referrals. Listen to the podcast. I, I watch on YouTube, Stacey. I do watch you on YouTube. Um, but there's a lot of juice in there. And if you want to catch up with Stacey and just get acquainted with um, this whole idea of um, generating business referrals without asking, first uh, place to stop is the podcast. Pick up the book. It's easy. 
uh, an easy read and it gets you on track. And if you want to learn more, go to the website. There's courses. You can join other people that are on the same path. Uh, and, and probably you have a one-on-one -on -one as well, Stace, and things like that. So um, awesome. Fantastic. Thank you so much for jumping on and being my guest. Uh, it's been wonderful to have you. And uh, I'm going to leave it there uh, and say thank you very much, Stacey. And I wish you every success in the, for the rest of the year. I'm sure it's all exploding for you. <laughs> thank you very much. I wish the same for you too, Adam. And I hope to see Referral Phil 2024. Oh, Referral Phil 2024 and, and beyond. And maybe I'll see you uh, again, Stacey, at an event sometime in the future in the US. But um, thank you very much, Stacey. And to everybody out there, if you would like to take my quiz, one final little spruik for this quiz of mine, adamsgoogle.com forward slash quiz. If you'd like a report on your strengths and opportunities, take the quiz. It takes two to three minutes, 15 questions. Very easy done. And until next week, until next Tuesday, I will say bye for now and take care. See ya.